Podcasting from somewhere in the San Francisco Bay Area, the birthplace of Bruce Lee, the iPhone, and the Bendy Straw. This is Ruel's Running Podcast, a podcast about running, health, family, play, and an NSNG lifestyle. And now, here's your host, Ruel. No was a dream, a million miles away, there was fire in Amazon.com. You know, I won't be surprised if more and more stuff that I shop for, buy, and get shipped to my home comes from Amazon. It's just a reality, right? And if this is your reality, go to ruelsrunning.com, click through to the Amazon banner to get to Amazon. Why am I asking you to do so? Well, it is a no-cost-to-you way, if you like listening to Ruel's Running Podcast, it is a way that you can help the show out without spending more than you've already spent while shopping at the good folks at Amazon.com. So help us out. Go to RuelsRunning.com, click through to the Amazon.com site, and shop, connect, and enjoy. Hello, citizens. It's Ruel. How's everybody doing? Hope everybody is doing well. In today's episode, it is a conversation with Vinny Tortorich, the one and only founder of NSNG Lifestyles, Pure Vitamin Club, the author of Fitness Confidential, the book. And and um, also, if you are a longtime listener of Ruel's Running Podcast, you will uh, have remembered the last year's episodes in three parts uh, with my sort of my feature guest episode with Vinny Tortorich. He was my first guest. So uh, if you roll back the... Uh, the times and listen to those old episodes, you will find out how uh, how uh, awful I was in the conversation, in my opinion, and um, I carry that tradition uh, in, t- in this particular episode because uh, I like to remain consistently awful. Yeah, so uh, I'll try to link to those ep- those old episodes in the show notes here. So this is a, a wonderful conversation I had with a guy. Um, he's a friend, and um, I want to say this was purely um, self-indulgent, this whole conversation. So uh, for, the, for those who know Vinny Tortorich, um, enjoy the show. For those who don't know who Vinny Tortorich is, check out uh, all the, the uh, things that I've mentioned, and um, also Google him, and uh, enjoy the show. Thank you. Hello, folks. Just one more note before we proceed. This is an explicit episode. Thank you very much. Hey, Vinny. How's it going? Good, man. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. I know we talk off the line, but I still want to say I can't, I can't, um, I can't believe it's been this long to get you back on the podcast. So well, in a way... Wait, first off, I need to know, are you part of my inner circle? <laughs> I didn't realize it was an. I didn't really realize it was an inner circle. Oh yeah, apparently there's this there's this secret inner circle that I I hear about from time to time. Wow, hmm. where can I sign up? I have no idea. Apparently, um, are you are you part of your inner circle, Vinny? No, they they haven't let me in. That, that's <laughs> part of the problem. Yeah, I, I keep hearing about this inner circle around me, and I'm like, well, who are these people, and how do I join? Chill, shit, I'm jealous. I wish I had an inner circle. Yeah, I think you're part of the inner circle of my inner circle, though. What? I don't even know. <laughs> all right, so all right, you know Lonnie Beauchamp, right? Oh yeah, Lonnie. Right, so is you awesome. know Lonnie, mm-hmm. and uh, do, do have you ever spoken to Greg Vick? No, I have not. I don't recall okay. having. Sp- yeah, I'm trying to think of who else is in that inner circle. Who else? You've heard about the inner circle, right? It's like this mafia I have or something or uh, no. back in the day earlier on in the, the when it was the Angriest Trainer podcast, there uh, yeah, there were goons. I wasn't a goon. Oh yeah, yeah, that was a whole different thing. And then I mean, Greg Vick was part of that. And you okay. weren't a goon yet. You weren't good enough to be a goon. We didn't even know you yet, did we? Uh I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're a weird dude. For a podcast that you don't talk a lot. When the hell did I become uh, noticeable in, on on your end. <laughs> I, I don't, <laughs> dude. I can't tell you what I did in the last podcast. <laughs> Do you remember at least 
wiping the last time you squatty potty? I I wipe every time I use a squatty potty. I I wipe really well. Some might say I'm an over wiper. <laughs> That's <laughs> the term. Um, I don't know when you came about, but, but by the way, I went and listened to I, I did something I never do. Yeah. I listened to the Wednesday podcast today. Okay. Just to hear what I said about Tina Louise. Oh yeah, uh, Gilligan's Island. Yeah, Tina, she, Tina she Louise. Was a big star back in the '60s and '70s, and the whole thing. And you know, I'm enamored with her, like most people. And uh, yeah, I was talking about her on the last podcast, and I see on Twitter some guy goes, "Hey man, uh, the woman's name is Capri something." Capri Sun. I don't know. Let me see what her name is. Um, eh, let's see what her name might be. Uh, Caprice, or Capri, I guess Caprice Crane is the daughter of Tina Louise. Okay. Beautiful woman, by the way. Um, a- absolutely stunning human being. Um, and she, you, you know, when you can look at someone's picture and tell that they're a nice person. Like, you could just see a picture of that person and go, oh, this is a nice person. I, I get that feeling. What beautiful, dark. Oh, she's got that, that look of, she's got the dark hair, the dark skin, and the green eyes. Right? She's got that thing going on. Okay. Kind of um, like a female Vinny. Yeah. No, I, see, I see now. Yeah. Okay, I see. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, she's a good-looking chick. And... Um, is everything okay? Well, someone was tweeting at her, hey, man, you should see what Vinny Tortorich is saying about your mom today on the podcast. And I'm like, you got to be fucking kidding me. This woman, she, you know, I'm sure she's a wife, a mother, and the whole thing. And now, uh, you know, you got to go tell this girl that I was talking about a mom on a podcast, especially if someone's going, hey, man, you got to go check this out. I'm thinking that I must have said something really bad about Tina Louise. Because I can't remember what I say on the podcast. Yeah. Am I making any sense here? Oh, you are. And I, I, I listened to the episode today as well. All right. So I didn't say anything bad, right? No, no, no. You and Andy, you know, you guys just being cool. Yeah. Like, as we are, sometimes we're cool, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I'm on Twitter. I could see kind of a... Uh... That, that little bit of, uh, hey, check out, uh, give it a listen about your mom. And, uh, yeah, oh, you so came you're, back seeing, with, you're seeing what I'm seeing, right? Yeah, and then you, then you came back with uh, that uh, she's the best. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I was like, God, I hope I didn't say anything bad about your mom because I love your mom. She's great. <laughs> Grew up with your mom. Are you kidding? I wonder how old Capri is. She's got to be in her 40s, right? Because if we learned on the show, uh, I learned when I listened back that Tina Louise is 82 years old. Yeah, she was born uh, November 1st, 1970. She's 45 years old. Let's see what let's see what Tina Louise's kid does for a living. Oh, oh she is uh, 45. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she went to the Tisch School of Art. That's you know she's a novelist, so she writes, screenwriter, <laughs> uh, television pro- and writer, producer, music supervisor. Okay, well, that, you know everyone says that in LA. Let, let's look at her biography and see. Crane was born in Los Angeles, the daughter of radio announcer, television talk show host Les Crane, and actress Tina Louise. After graduating from New York University. Tate School of Art and Film, da 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 MTV hired her to write, produce, music, supervise, game shows, sports, yeah, yeah. Her first novels, entitled Stupid, Stupid and Contagious, 2006, is taken from the lyrics of the Nirvana song, Smells Like Teen Spirit. Wow. Uh, I want to get in touch with her. I, I want to get her on the show. Uh, yeah. Now, now I'm interested in her. Oh. Uh, she's also worked on uh, CW's Zona 210 and Melrose Place, C- uh, NBC. Um, oh, Stupid and Contagious is in development at NBC. Crane is also a co-author along with Steve Jenkins of Derek Walters and Derek Walters of the book um, Esther, The Wonder Pig, 
Change the, uh, change the world one heart at a time. So it must be a pig valve. Sounds like an interesting chick, right? Oh, yeah. She's got her own website. <clears throat> Did you? She does? Yeah. What's on her website? Uh, more pictures of her. Um, a lot of logos for, for other media um, things. Let's see. There's a link to her books. So, you know, as you mentioned, she's a novelist. Yeah, I got a ton of books. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at, I'm look, is it called uh, Crane? What's it called? Welcome to the official website, Capri Crane? Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah, she'll, you, probably, like, she'll probably come on the show because she's got something to promote, right? Why not? Yeah. I want to have her on. Oh, she's wow. on Facebook. Yeah? Let's see here. Uh, this is a great show we're doing right now. You hear all that clicking noise? This is this is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Here she is. <laughs> she, uh, her mom played G Ginger on Gilligan's Island. Yeah, her mom was quite the thing back in the day. Oh yeah, yeah. I love that title, "Stupid and Contagious." Stupid and contagious. Remember that in the song? Smells like. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I just heard, all I heard was ah. I didn't realize those were those were actual words. Oh yeah, he he's saying actual words, man. Oh look, there's a great photo. And now I feel bad if I said anything about Tina. There's a picture of Capri, um, and her mom Tina chilling out at the fountain at the fountain across from the plaza in Central Park, uh, with my very best girl. Oh my God, I mean. A, I, a, I hope I don't say anything yeah. bad about her mom. God damn it. Uh, I don't think he said anything bad. I just You remember, heard uh, podcast, right? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, when, you see, I hate when people... You know what I think happened? I think Andy kind of reined things in. Like, no, let's not. Let's not talk about anything. Yeah, because... <laughs> Specific, he, yeah. Yeah. Man. I, if anything, I think you got... Um, you got... You got um, who was this? Um... Based on something or other, the one that sort of tried to put you on uh, Caprice's radar radar on Twitter. Right. I think, if anything, got basic curious in trying to get Caprice to be curious. Because I don't think you guys went into anything in detail that, that's, uh, that's bad. Just uh, that you guys both had your own personal experiences and uh, that she's a great... She was a great person back then, and you guys were just talking about how, uh, kind of like what we're doing now. Well, I wonder what she's doing now. How old is she today, and, you know, what's she up to? Yeah. So you heard the whole thing, and you know that I wasn't, you know. Yeah, and, you know, if, and if, if folks, you know, in general, like, get, you know, get their, their lips plumped up, it's, it's <laughs> you, you can expect people to notice you got your lips plumped up. That, yeah. that's, not an, that's not an issue, I think. Well, I will reach out to this woman uh, anyway because uh, she seems like a very sweet girl, and uh, her, her mom her mom is Ameri is an American masterpiece. Icon. Oh yeah, you know. Here's a you see now I'm feel, I'm I'm flipping through her Facebook. I'm looking at photos of her and her mom together. They look so happy. Mother's Day with a gorgeous girl. Uh, you see. Ruel, this is why I don't do any, I don't talk to anyone, I don't do anything, because I wouldn't be able to do what I do on the podcast if I, because you see, I start feeling bad, and it's like, oh man, I think I said something about dropping loads to her mom or something. No, 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 oh, oh wait a minute. You know, and this, yeah, this woman but, has to hear this, right? But but you know what? <laughs> I, I, uh, yeah, you did say that, but you know when your when your mom is a uh, should I say a uh, um, what is it the term um, um, like an American masterpiece? But but here's the thing, uh, you know my mom is almost Tina Louise's age, right? My mom is actually younger than Tina. My mom is uh, I want to say seventy eight or something like that, seventy seven, seventy eight. And Tina is 82. I mean, this, this woman loves her mom. And uh, I, I was sitting there talking about her mom as an object, as men sometimes do. And this girl is somewhat of a, you know, she's about, she's about my yeah. age. 
She's a beautiful yeah. girl. And it doesn't matter that your mom was Tina Louise. You, you know what I mean? It's it's. I bet Caprice is like, oh, okay, it's just it's just another day. You know, I know who my mom is. My mom, in her own right, was uh, like you said, she's um, this American fixture on TV. Uh, maybe a uh, an idol or a I don't know. What I'm trying to think of a term like. A, not a like a bombshell or a well, look, sex symbol. I, well, I, well, let's look at that. I'm with uh, a woman who was in media a lot as a bombshell, mm-hmm. right? Hell, we're getting picket, tickets paid for to go to Norway next month <clears throat> just because Serena is a beautiful woman. It's bottom line. Bottom line. You know. And uh, she's doing a Bond convention, you know, the Bond girl thing or whatever. And that's something going on. And, you know, we get flown places and do things. And But I, I look at my, my bigger celebrity clients, um, and I know sometimes they'll see a tweet or something, and we think that they're bigger than that, right? And they say, oh, you know, so-and-so is such a big star, they won't care about that. But they do care. I mean, it hurts, you know? It always hurts. I see. You, does that make sense? It does. It does. I, I know what you're saying because, you know, you, you sit there and you go, well, oh, she's Tina Louise. I mean, what does what Capri or Caprice, how would you say her name? Capri or Caprice? I guess Caprice because it's got a C-E on it. Yeah. Uh, Caprice. Caprice you know, oh, she's got to be used to that. She's been on the earth since 1970, so she's got to be used to this. And my answer to that is, does she really have to? Because she doesn't have to. It, you, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I but it, it isn't anything new. That's that's what I'm thinking. It's, right, doesn't, right. She doesn't but, have to. She doesn't it, it have doesn't to make it okay for me to do that. Is yeah, what I'm yeah. saying. You know. And the crazy part is, I've gone on for 15 minutes <laughs> running your podcast. Yay! Not letting you even get a word in about anything because all I want to talk about is uh, is uh, Tina Louise now. Uh, moving on, uh, uh, there's a girl named Alexander. Um, her mother-in-law is Sophia Loren. Um, I can't think of her first name. Can Sophia. you look up look up Sophia Loren's? I don't know. Her son is a director or something, a music guy. Um, I will find it. <laughs> yeah, Serena was uh, something Alexander. Serena was on a TV show that this girl's a star of oh, last is, night. Is it, you've got a Eduardo Ponte, Carlo Ponte. Yeah, the, Carlo Ponte was the husband of Sofia Loren. Yeah, and I, I guess they had a child with the same name, Carlo Ponte, yeah. and there was another one, Edu, 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 Eduardo Ponte. Eduardo, um, yes. Yeah. I know way too much about Sofia Loren. Uh, all right, who is one of those guys married to? An actress, right? Dun, 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 ye. Oh, okay, let's see. Da, 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 da. Eduardo you, is married to Sasha Alexander. Sasha Alexander, yeah. Serena just did a show with uh, Sasha Alexander. Show came out the other night. Like oh, two nights oh yeah. I, and I'm, I'm like, I'm sitting there going, honey, can you introduce me? I, I got to meet Sasha so that I can meet Eduardo. Is that his name? Or is she married to the other one? Eduardo. Eduardo yeah. Ponte is her husband. Sasha Alexander's husband is Eduardo Ponte. Which means she's the daughter-in-law to... Sofia Loren. Loren. In my eyes, the most beautiful woman to ever grace this planet. Any generation, I dare anyone to tell me otherwise. And I'll tell you this, Ruel. Um, she took a piece of shrapnel to the face in World War II. That's Interesting. Right. Yeah. Crap couldn't mess up. A bomb couldn't mess up that face. It only made it better. And Sasha Alexander, when I first saw her as an actress, was on the uh, television television uh, show NCIS, where her character got killed off because she got shot in the forehead. Really? Huh? Isn't there, uh, it's crazy, weird. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so now we've covered Sophia Loren. We've covered... Uh, Eduardo Ponte, Sasha yeah, Alexander. Okay. But more so, screw him, man. Uh, we covered um, uh, Tina Louise. Uh huh. And, and by the way, is Tina's daughter gorgeous or is it just me? No, she's attractive. No, Ruel. Right? Yeah. Ruel. Ah. 
What? What, Vinny? Vinny? You're attractive. This girl is beautiful. Gorge- I don't use the word gorgeous. I don't uh, use the word. Why right not? Now. Use it right now in a sentence. <laughs> So I want you to say Caprice is gorgeous. Caprice is gorgeous. <laughs> See, come on, man. You can say that. She's hot, right? Caprice is hot. She's gorgeous. So is Sasha Alexander. Oh, yeah. Serena Scott Thomas. Oh, yeah. I'm there hitting that, by the way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and uh, my memory of um, Tina Louise as well. From uh, this, from the the TV show, right? You know what? I'm going to find those TV shows somewhere online and start watching them beginning to end with your Pelicans Island. Mm-hmm. Yep. They, they do a whole marathon, <laughs> dude. A, a marathon? I can't jerk off that much. <laughs> you got two hot chicks on an island. All right, here's the deal. You know the deal, right? You ever watched the show? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, you got you got Gilligan. Oh God, man! Right? Yeah, yeah. You got your professor. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they had to put him on the show because you got to figure out a way to make stuff happen. Uh huh. Right? And then you got your you got your uh, your skipper. He's the one who screwed up and got him in that mess. Uh huh. All right. So you got those three guys. So right there, you got three men, right? Yeah. And then there's a fourth man, but he's married. Now, mm-hmm. here's the part that never made sense to me when I was a kid. What's a millionaire doing going off on a three-hour tour? A three-hour tour. A three-hour tour. Right? What's he doing there? It makes no sense. You know, I, I go, okay, you got to bring, you got the buffoon, and you got Gilligan. He's the buffoon, and the skipper's going to hit him over the head with the hat every time he does. Oh, Gilligan. And then you got to have the professor to figure out, like, technical stuff so they can keep the show going. Yeah, the, the only thing I can think of is the Thurston Howell the Third convinced his wife Lovey to go on the three hour tour. The three hour tour. The three hour tour. Because Thurston was trying to get in the uh the shorts and the dress of both Marianne and Ginger. But you see, he ne- they never allude like that's the crazy thing. You know, Bacchus, the actor, never looks at either one of those girls cross-eyed, not in one episode. Really? Huh. Now, look, I mean, Marianne, <laughs> she created the Daisy Duke, right? Before Daisy Duke, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm wearing my Marianne's right now. Yeah. I, I call <laughs> mine my Marianne's. People go, oh, what, what do you mean, Mary Jane? You smoke joints? No, no, no. No, um, I'm talking about Marianne from Gilligan's. I wear my Mary Ann's and my Gilligan's hat. Yeah. So she was the original Daisy Duke. I got to look her up. Daisy Duke. Here we go. Look, well, you just put Daisy in. It comes up before the BB gun. Here we go. Oh, yeah. (laughs) There, Catherine Bach. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, I don't think she turned out so well, though. Really? I, I remember her from. Do you remember the 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 um, um, Cannonball Run oh, TV movie? Of course. You uh, mean one of the best movies ever done? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, she was one of those gals with the. Uh, was it in the Lamborghini or something? And then had gets pulled over by the cop and pulls down the zipper just to expose more clear just cleavage little, to get out of the ticket. Right? <laughs> those are fun movies. You know, I'm looking at her, man. She uh, man, she was quite the thing back in the day. I oh, love, oh. I used to love watching this. Yeah, she was a little freckly face thing. Whenever you, I'm looking at a picture of her here where she doesn't have a top on. Yeah. But she's got her elbows covering the nipples type of thing. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's right. uh, <laughs> the, yeah. Coming up, Rue gives us something else to think about. How vague is that, Ruel? Jeez. Could you be any vaguer, Ruel? Well, it's all coming up on Ruel's Running. Okay. The book is called Eat Happy, Gluten-Free, Grain-Free, Low-Carb Recipes for a Joyful Life by me, Anna Vicino. 
Eat Happy has 154 delicious grain-free, gluten-free recipes that are also free of any processed sugars. There are meats, fish, sides, soup, starters, casseroles, slow cooker recipes, breakfast dishes, and even desserts to satisfy any sweets craving you might have, all with virtually no sugar. If you are low-carb, paleo, are wanting to keep autoimmune issues at bay, or just want to lose extra weight, Eat Happy gives you comfort food where you won't miss the sugars or grains so your body and brain can feel happy from eating real food. The ebook is available for purchase. And, you know, I'm finding out that a lot of people like uh, cookbooks on an ebook. Okay, go get it then. Now's your chance. Yay! Yay! The Daisy Dukes today, though, I mean, they're like commonplace for like the little teenage girls and kind of troubles me a little bit but well you know what bothers me about the whole thing is and it it disturbs me to no end as i see these young girls it it makes me sound like a very old man but at at the stake at at, you know at the risk of sounding ancient these girls 16 17 years old they're out there with the um they got the cheeks hanging out of the back of their shorts yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that's okay. I don't oh, think it's okay. Everybody's going, oh, to each his own. Come on, everybody, yeah. to each his own. No, no, I don't want my kid walking out like that, right? Yeah, not as a parent, no, but I, no. I, I, I mean, I can, I can like put my mind next to the teenage dude that's hanging out with the kid who's pretty young with the cheeks coming, hanging, hanging out and be like, yeah, this is fun. This is great. This is awesome. But yeah, not anymore. <laughs> Yeah, but you got daughters, right? I have got a daughter. Yeah. That, that's, that's the whole change. It's like, uh, no, no. Yeah, you see, it gets weird, right? Because, yeah, you know, I, you know, I got Tallulah, a beautiful girl, and I don't want her going with her ass cheeks out. No, 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 no. No? Yeah. I don't like seeing that. In an alternate world, if I were a young girl, I wouldn't want my cheeks out either. Can you imagine, you know, there's there's things called tissue that may cling on to your skin i mean with my luck i'd have like stuff all coming out of my cheeks you don't want to see that well you just ruined dinner for <laughs> i don't see anything coming out of your ass or do you uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, <laughs> you never know you know speaking of which um about a week <laughs> or two ago man I'm, this Catherine bach was something else back in the day oh yeah no look she was no tina louise and God forbid she was she was no Sophia Loren, no one is. But uh pretty 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 easy on the eyes, I'm telling you. Um Serena and I went for a weekend last weekend. She was like, We we need to get away. We you know, you you know, I work at home now. By the way, is this interview going the way you want it to or anywhere this near is, that? This is exactly the way I want it to go. <laughs> okay. You- <laughs> <laughs> because uh, you haven't asked the question yet. I've just been giving no, be, no, because I I'm like I listen to Vinny and I'm like I'm listening to Vinny here and even though it's my podcast, I'm like, what am I gonna do? Like, hold that thought, Vinny. Can you tell me how to lose weight? God, that's not gonna work. No, let's talk oh, about Catherine what? Bach for another thirty minutes. Yeah. So, okay, where was I? Oh, so Serena wanted to go to. Um, yeah, she's like, oh, we need to get away because you work from the house most of the time now. So I'm a workaholic, and what I'll do is I'll just keep working, right? I, like, I won't stop working if that yeah. makes any sense. So she said, we need to get away. We need to go somewhere. So um, I spent a couple of thousand dollars to go sleep right down the street from my house. Does that make sense? Did you guys go to the beach? Well, we went to the beach, but we went to, um, you know, we didn't go to Malibu, which is what I want. I said, let's just go to Malibu. And that's a destination for everyone. Everyone goes, oh, my God, I'd love to go to California. Go to Malibu one day, right? So she was like, no, if we go to Malibu, we're too close to home, and we'll just turn around and come back type of thing. So she was right. So we went to Santa Barbara, which takes about an hour from my house. You know, we oh, yeah. live on the yeah. way to Santa Barbara. Have you ever been there, Ruel? 
Yeah, it's, uh, my wife and I used to spend a lot of time there. Uh, yeah, as our go-to uh, getaway. Where do you uh, guys stay when you go there? Uh, we've tried the. Uh, we've tried the. Um, what the hell are those places called? The little motels. <laughs> we tried yeah. best. We tried a best western. Um, we did the uh, the uh, the Fest Parker uh, double tree at one time. Well, how was that? Because you see, that's where I would go. Because you know, I'm a Daniel Boone guy, right? You know, the room we stayed in, it it did feel like 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 the town. It's it's got years on it, and it, it it's impressive from the outside. And it's the room felt like its age. Um, I really liked the fact that the lobby had breakfast and coffee, mostly coffee. Um, but yeah, it it's fine. I don't know if I'd stay there again. Um, if anything, well, I'd stay. I'd stay like at a. Where did we stay last time? You know, up north from it, Goleta. There's yeah. a, there's a, there's there's like, Hilton owned other hotels where, you know, breakfast is free and and more, the 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 spread is a, is greater. So I can get, I have, I have more choices for the kids. So I'll I'll stay at a place like that. And there's guaranteed web access in case I needed to get online and, you know, Google search. Tina Louise and Eduardo Ponti. Well, all right. Here's the thing. <laughs> um, we we went there, and uh, God, I, I wish we would have done it the way you do it. <laughs> I got to be honest with you. Uh, I would be a richer man today. Um, Did you guys stay at the Santa Barbara Inn? Oh God, I wish. Or the Santa Barbara Hotel, whatever downtown. The rooms are really small. We stayed at a place called Bacara. Have you ever heard of it? Yeah, I think so. It, it, when uh, you say the name Bacara, I just said, you know what? I'm this not is, even this is, ask. This is away from. This is away from downtown. It's like this, it's like in Galita, I think. It's, yeah, it's you're, on the it's, other it's, end of Santa Barbara. Yeah, yeah. And it's up on a bluff. Yeah. And it's it's over there, and it's a spa. And when Serena said, "It's uh, hidden from the freeway." Oh, right? yeah, there's no yeah. freeway noise. And, and yeah. Yeah. all you can hear is the, the waves crashing against the rocks. How was and, it? Well, here's the thing. I, I handed Serena my credit card, and I said, just get a place and wherever you... And I said, oh, and she goes, yeah, we're going and tomorrow. And I said, okay, where are, we, where are we heading? And she goes, well, I wanted to stay at the Four Seasons, but I got us a really good deal at Bacara. Right? Yeah. Okay. You, you know, when... When something is a thousand bucks a night for a room, and you get told you get a really good deal and it's going to be nine hundred, in my mind, it's still not a really good deal. <laughs> I'm paying nine hundred bucks for a bed. You know, it's that kind of thing. Women will always tell you, "Oh, you don't think you understand? I got a deal." But I decided we're going to be there for a couple of nights. I'm not going to say anything or do anything. I just want to go and have fun, right? And we did. And I still don't know what this holiday cost me. And <laughs> I don't want to know. But I'm pretty sure I'm much less, I have much less money now than I had before the trip. Yeah, my, my, my one time at Bacara, my wife and I were in the Santa Barbara area. We had scheduled meetings with various wedding, <clears throat> wedding venues. Bacara was one of them. And... There was no way we were going to have a wedding or a reception or anything that had to do at Bacara. Just, you know, just getting the wedding together in the first place was, God, it was going to be a lot of money. So, you know, we did the tour at Bacara. I was like, wow, it's really, really nice here. But it's really, really expensive. Next place. But that's my recollection of Bacara. It was out of, it was away from downtown. It's like a pr private, like you described, it's on the bluff. Um, but yeah. Like you look at it and you go, okay, this is money. This is mm -hmm. not, this is not a cheap date, right? I mean, you 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 see that going in, right? I mean, there is no way around that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no Groupon to get around that. No, 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 no. The, 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 I don't think you say Groupon and they will literally <laughs> have someone slap you. And they, they, they'll ask you, do you want a man or a woman to slap you? Because we'll let you go either way. <laughs> but um, Groupon, no, we don't do that. So we're at Bacara. Yeah. And uh, Ser Serena goes, hey, uh, 
let's go work out a little bit. So we did. And uh, we went for, you know, she went for a run. And I went into the, the fitness club where I, I, you know, I worked on my shoulder and the whole thing. I did a little uh, aerobic routine in there. You know, got on the elliptical and the whole thing. Did some more shoulder work. Really got a good stretch out. Man. I was feeling good. And, um, you know, we were doing the whole thing. And, and uh, then uh, Serena goes, hey, well, let's say we go lay by the pool. And I went, it sounds like a good idea. Because, uh, yeah. you know, when do you go lay by the pool in life? It just doesn't happen, right? So You got to lay by the pool. You're in yeah. Bac- Bacara. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, you know, I go by the pool. Guy comes by. Hey, he's got an accent from somewhere else in the world. What would you like to drink? He's yeah, from Guam, kind of right? Thing. Huh? He was from Guam, right? Uh, no, he no. They didn't even do that. That would have been nice. <laughs> they went with like the European guys, right? They went. Oh, they're all out over there, man. They're, they're all out. Wow. Right? Okay. So, so you're by the pool. The guy yeah. comes over. So uh-huh. Serena says, uh, she goes. Uh, Listen. Wait, hang on, Stella. I'm not done here yet. Go, go, go do something else. Good girl. So uh, I, 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 I dribble off my uh, my top layer, and I got my little red bikini on, my little speedo. And she goes, uh, "No, no, what are you doing?" And I said, uh, "I'm getting some sun, getting some vitamin D, honey. Come on." This is Serena talking to you. Yeah. Or the the or the 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 help. No, Serena, <laughs> she's embarrassed because this fifty three year old guy with hair all over his body, this Italian, has now got the uh, the the red bikini on, right? And uh, she's not liking this to me. She's like, no, any, we're not. You're not doing other, that. Any other day, but Bacara. No, she she <laughs> she's always embarrassed by it. When I'm in Europe, I do it. I do. It. And I, I turned to her and said, honey, listen, what, what do you expect? I'm Italian. And, you know, it's like a couple of weeks ago, an alligator ate a kid in Florida, and everybody was shocked. And I was like, what do you expect? That's what alligators do. Yeah, there you, you know, go. Alligators do what alligators do. If you don't want your kid to be eaten by an alligator, keep your kid away from the fucking water. Just do it. Right. So I'm laying there and she was like, I'm so embarrassed. I said, well, honey, uh, you know, I can put my top layer back on, but then you'll be happy and I'll be unhappy. How about that? And she's like, you know, you're right. This is your vacation. I went, yeah, of course, it's my vacation. I paid for it. And um, this is what I want to wear on my vacation. And uh, she was like, yeah, you know, what? I- I'm sorry I said anything. You're right. You know, where, you know, do what you want to do. Yeah, you work hard, you know. And I was like, I'm so proud of her for saying that. You know, I was like, thank you, honey. So uh, the second day, I'm out there again with my red bikini. Now, the second day, there's a lot of people there because now, now it's the weekend. Yeah. Right? By the way, the whole time I'm talking to you, I'm still looking at photos <laughs> of chicks. That's okay. <laughs> I've somehow I- moved on to Constant Zimmer. Don't ask. I, I've got Bakara on my screen, and I've got you on the little window. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking at I went from Sophia Loren. I went from Tina Louise, Sophia Loren, Daisy Duke. Somehow I ended up on Constant Zimmer. Now, I'm trying to think of a way to fit in, you know, your chest hair into a joke, but I can't because I'm not that S- jokey. Sit back, Ruel. I'm making the jokes for you here. <laughs> all right, all right, um, right, 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 right. You don't have to worry about it too much. Um, oh, really? All right. Um, now I'm reading stuff about Constance Zimmer. Okay, so anyway, uh, you see, I can't stay on one subject, man. It's, it's just too. Dumb. So we're we're there on the second day, and uh, by now she's used to seeing me in the red bathing suit and the whole thing. And and uh, by the way, I don't walk around like that. That's when I'm laying down. But when I'm walking around, what I do is uh, I just uh, uh, you know I, I I pull on some shorts to go to the bathroom and that kind of thing. I'm not going to walk around in my uh, speedo, you know. That's wrong. Nobody no, not with. Needs to see that. No, not yeah. with with not with Guam. No, and, and that's the other thing. Yeah, it's poking <laughs> out. It looks like I'm stuffing the damn thing because I got three nuts in there, and there's not a whole lot of space, a lot of area to cover it all up. It's a deal, you know. 
was this the uh, the um, what the heck was it uh, the David David Hasselhoff Beach TV thing? What was it? Baywatch. What are these Baywatch, Baywatch speedos? Yeah. These were, these it, were your official Baywatch speedos. It wasn't my official Baywatch speedos, but it was at least on Baywatch they would have a shave down all of our um, chest hair and everything. No, I'm out there with gray chest hair. I'm doing oh, yeah. the whole thing. I look like an old Italian man with all the gray hair on my back, the whole thing. People are looking. They must be disgusted. And on the second day, um, Serena, <laughs> I, I see this couple over looking at me and smirking, and I get it. I, I see what they're doing. And uh, I said, Serena, you see that couple over there? She goes, yeah. I said, uh, they're smirking at me and, and uh, making a joke out of what I'm doing over here. And she goes, honey, everybody's been laughing at you for two days. And I said, I know, isn't it great? And she <laughs> goes, how do you put up with that? And I said, you know what? It's like the guy who goes to the whorehouse and he's got the smallest penis in the world. And the whore says to him, who do you expect to please with that thing? And the guy says, me. You know, I said, I'm that guy. I'm not here. I don't care about these people. and They, they want to look and judge me? Fine. Fine. You know what? But I'm not going to go home with a, a tan that looks like I had board charts on. I love you know? it. it. That's the way we got to be in life, right? Yeah. Yeah. You, gotta be you. It's not about everybody else. All the time. Like I say, Ruel, you be you. You, you do you and I'll do me. Right? Thank you. Yeah. Anyway, I didn't mean to hijack your entire podcast. What are we talking about today? Um, you didn't hijack my podcast. You're kind of working. You're um, you're kind of falling into my my hands here as far as how I want the podcast to flow. Oh, I don't have a I, doing well. Yeah, this is sort of self indulgent Ruel's podcast episode. I just want to talk with you know, and hear you know Vinny. Is that bad? There's, no, there's, I, I'm, I'm liking this. I, I like what we're doing here. Can't I just, you know, kind of move away from the, so Vinny, tell me, um, 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 how did you get your start in life? And uh, can you tell me the most inspiring thing you ever heard in your life and blah, blah, blah. Uh, oh, the one I always get. You, you probably listen to all these podcasts I do, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's always. So how do you get popular on the Internet? And the answer is, I don't know. <laughs> so move on. I, I love it. Idea. I love it. I love the uh, I love the other one too that uh, you talk about many times where you um, are in an interview and they just kind of grill through their whole the interview would grill through a whole checklist of questions and not even pay attention to anything that you said and it just is really weird. I I like this kind of weird. It's just kind of like and eh, I just talk what, talk about whatever floats your boat because I don't know what your day was like. You know, <laughs> I'm hoping that maybe this is a little bit not out of your way and a little bit therapeutic. Hopefully, because it is for me. <laughs> Well, you want to know about my day? You want to talk about that? Let's talk about your day, Vinny. You know, because people ask me, like, they pay a lot of money, and they go, tell me uh, what you eat and what you do. All right, I woke up this morning, and I did a lot of Twittering, and uh, then I went over and visited uh, a celebrity, because uh -huh. I get paid to do that. Uh-huh. And then I came back here, and uh, I got on my spinner, and I uh, did that for about an hour. And while I was on the spinner, I pulled up a uh, an old Sam Kennison routine uh, because tomorrow night I have to go be on stage at the Pasadena Ice House a Comedy Club. Yeah, uh, I, I didn't know. You know, I was like, uh, let, let, you know, I was like, I'm gonna get on my spinner. Let me watch. Uh, let me watch the pros do it. Right? Yeah, yeah. I watched some Kennison, and uh, man, it brought back some memories. It was it was a show from 1990 or 91. Uh, because I'd met his wife, uh, Malika, uh, right around that time. I, you know, I met her somewhere at Playboy or somewhere. And, uh, you know, we, you know we, I was watching that and stayed on the spinner. And then I had to um, clean up a little bit because I, I went over to Corolla Digital and did the Adam Corolla show. And uh, then I grabbed some lunch. I had a hamburger with cheese on it, no bun, no nothing else, no sauce. He had a tomato with it, a slice of tomato, and uh, got home just in time to talk to you. About 
this wonderful interview. Not an interview. Yeah. So people always want to know what my day is like. And that's what's, that's that's my day. You didn't that, take any time to pull out the old beret and to wear out on stage at the Ice House, kind of like a Sam Kennison-esque? Oh, you know what? Get a beret. I should do that, right? Yeah, and then just do anything. Just scream your lungs out like Sam does I've seen on TV. Yeah, <laughs> he, he would always pull out a guitar and do a song. And Mississippi play, Queen! He would do, you play do the that guitar? one. Huh? Do you play the guitar? No, I play the radio. Huh? Huh? Yeah. Um, you can get Chris, yeah. Chris to play the guitar for you. Uh, Lock- Chris Laxamana, who's a uh, Guamian, I think. Really? Yeah, oh. I think he's from Guam. Okay. Um, we could... he, how, how tall are you, Ruel? I'm 5'6". Oh, yeah, you're way taller than him. You're like an NBA player next to him. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's a little thing. And uh, Chris Laxamana is going to open up the show tomorrow night. And gonna uh, he's gonna he's gonna do um, thirty minutes between uh, eight and eight thirty, and then right at eight thirty he's gonna bring on stage. Serena, wow. uh Not Serena Scott Thomas. He's gonna bring on uh, Anna Vocino. Yeah. Who, by the way, folks, if you want to get a great cookbook, it's up for pre order right now. Uh, the I think the like the electronic the PDF is gonna be out. You know, you can get it at Amazon. That'll come out before the actual book. Yeah, the Kindle edition. The, it's called the Kindle edition? It's the, the Kindle edition is out on pre-order right now on Amazon. You can get it. Yeah. And yeah, uh, it'll go, be those, go get that. I, I've read the whole thing. It's amazing. You will love that book. Yeah, it, I'm going to get mine. So um, so Chris is going to bring up, right at, eight, at 8.30, he's going to bring up uh, Anna Vocino, who's going to regale the audience with her, her brand of comedy for, you know, eight, ten minutes, something like that. And then she's going to introduce me, and Laxamana is going to bring me on with a song. Yeah, we're going to be yeah. rocking out. I, God, I hope that gets recorded. I want to watch it. I just can't be there. I'm hoping the recording comes out well. Yeah, okay. You know, yeah. Because we will record it. I have uh, Mike August, uh, not Mike August, uh, um, Mike... Um, Dawson, who works for Adam Carolla show, he's a sound guy. Uh, he's coming and he's going to do the sound, and um, so hopefully we get that captured. I'm going to also video it. Don't know if we're going to get the video right or not, but I will try to get the video right. So we're going to have that. We're going to have the sound. We're going to have everything going, man. And uh, and uh, we're going to rock that joint to shit. Chris is going to bring me up to either Born on the Bayou or. Um, uh, no sugar tonight in my coffee. I uh, guess that's gonna be all gonna be awesome. <laughs> yeah, we, you know, I'm gonna go up and do an hour and a half. Yep, it's gonna how, be a how, you, hey? how does it feel? It's tomorrow. How do you feel right now? I, I don't think about that stuff. You don't? Okay, you don't. You don't let nerves get to you or anything. No, no. no? Oh, it's right. thing, I was talking to Mike August earlier today because, as you know, I I, I do speeches all over the world now. And uh, he was like, hey, man, you got any jokes chambered? And I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, "Uh, you know, you're you're in a comedy club. Are you going to chamber any jokes? And I'm like, what? I I don't have jokes. He goes, you should have a couple of jokes. And I said, I don't have jokes. I'm sorry, man. And uh, so he got me nervous for a second. I said, you know, I'm not going to do that. That's not what I do. I don't do jokes. I, I do my thing. I'm going to go up and do 30 minutes on Tina Louise. <laughs> there you go. I mean, think about it. Have I stopped talking yet? How long have we been talking, Ruel? Um, it's, it's only been about 45 minutes that we've been going at it. Okay. Yeah? Do, do I need to have jokes? No. No, I like your thing, Vinny. Yeah. Does that sound weird? I like your thing, Vinny. Look, I mean, I think people like what we do, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm told my show is huge for, you know, for podcast thing. Your, uh, the way you guys operate, um, it's going to sound cliche, it inspires me uh, to know that I can turn on the mic and uh, be whoever I am and just let it flow. 
and uh, you know, not be like uh, I don't know. If if, if 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 I'm making any sense, you know, I'll turn on a podcast and it's like they've scripted everything out and they're just reading it. And I've tried that; it just doesn't feel right. You guys turn on the mic and you guys flow, and I'm entertained. I'm happy. I'm inspired. I learn something. So, you know, I I love what you do. I love what you and Anna, Andy. I love what the whole organization is doing. I'm still here. Did yeah, I just? Well- do a, too too much of a hug around the whole Vinny thing. Well, I, look, I, I'm not asking for an ass kiss in here, but you know, the bottom line is, you know, people, you know, people ask me all the time, it's like, how do you guys plan out the podcast? And I'll go, well, if Anna says she can do it at ten in the morning, at uh, ten o'clock, I ring her up on uh, how do you say Skype? Yeah, and I say, do we have sponsors for this show? And she says. Yeah, Squatty Potty and Villa Capelli and, uh, you know, audible.com or whatever she says. And <clears throat> I'll go, okay, we don't even write those. They, you know, they sent us copy. I've never read copy once. I love yeah. it. I, I love it. So stream of consciousness and it yeah. works. Yeah. It's, so no, it's, yeah. So, so no wonder why when people ask, you know, how do you do it? And it's like, I don't know, because you, you, you are just being you. You are it. That's how you do it. So be who you are. Yeah, you 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 do you is is what I always say about all this stuff. You know, you, um, you don't let the folks at the pool staring at you <laughs> bother you. Right. And I think if I was the kind of guy who did, I could never do this stuff. Um, I remember early on when I first started doing the speeches. Yeah. Um, I'm back to Daisy Duke again, by the way, in case you're wondering. Um, back when I used to do the speeches, um, when I first started doing them, uh, my friend, Dr. X, I was doing one at the hospital and she said, uh, you know, it's for the women's heart symposium. And she goes, are you nervous? And I said, no, because I was sitting in the audience next to her watching all these other doctors. There's yeah. a couple of hundred people in the audience and the whole thing. And these doctors have these, uh, you know, these PowerPoint presentations and the whole thing. And she goes, uh, did you bring a PowerPoint? I said, no. Nah. She goes, uh, right, what are you going to talk about? I said, uh, fitness. And she goes, you don't even seem nervous. And I said, I, I can't get nervous. And she goes, you're getting ready to walk up into in front of a couple of hundred people. And I said, here's the thing. If you keep talking this way, I will get nervous. But I wasn't even thinking about it until you started in with, are you nervous? Right? I know my subject. I know what I do. I know how I do what I do. I don't need to get nervous. All I need to do is go up and do it. If I start getting self-conscious about what people think about me, then we got we got ourselves a problem. Yeah. Right, I hear you. you. You know what? I don't know if you if if you get if you hear this at all. But things like what you just said, there's a lot of wisdom in just what you're describing. Be who you are, and don't let anybody else try and make you nervous. Just do what you do because you know what you know. I take a lot from that, um, so that I don't myself get too self conscious about crap around me, so I can do my own self. I just kind of sound like I talked circles and repeated what you said, but it's deep, brother. It's deep. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I guess you know, and because I, I could be that. I could, I can imagine being that podcaster. Like you just said what you said, and I could. I'm not letting that go over my head because there's a lot of meaning to it, and I don't know where this podcast is going, but I'm taking a lot out of it. This is a really sort of selfish. Um, moment for me to get you on and record and hear you talk Um, because where are you going to learn this in a book you know I really or where are you going to learn this with people you work with day to day I don't have that I you know around here I'm so lucky to have it coming from you and and I didn't learn it from a book you know that's that's the crazy part there was no book to go to to figure out how to podcast or how to go up on stage or when I had a radio show back in the 80s there was no, this is how you do it. You know, you, you just do it. You know, you just, you, you, you be you. And, um, that's why when I go to 
an expensive place with rich whitey, uh, like Bacara, names that actually sound expensive. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Serena's like, she looks around, she goes, yeah, you know what? I guess the reason I love you is because you're doing your thing, right? Oh, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, I, I'm not going to go put on airs and, and pretend and, you know, people always ask me, it's like, you know, uh, my buddy Coddington, he'll go, hey, why don't you have a, a nicer car than you have? And it's like, because this one works fine. You know, and I often I think about going out and getting a, like a snazzy sports car, and I probably will uh, at some point uh, because I gave up a sports car whenever the economy went bad back in '08, and I, you know, m when my when my economy got better back in like 2000, I'm gonna say 2012. So, you know, four years ago things started looking up. I didn't go back and buy a sports car again. And I was like, why? Who, who am I impressing with that thing? You know? Yeah. Um, but I like, you know, I like them for me. I just don't take the time. It's kind of like if Serena hadn't said, let's go to Bacara. And if I wouldn't have given her my credit card, I would have ended up in the Motel 6. Right? Yeah. Or, but, not, a, or not at a vacation at all. And you guys would just be, you know, stuck at home working. Right. You know, and when we go off to um, Norway, that's work. She's got to work. And then we're going to a wedding in the south of France or in a French countryside. That's not work, but it's family stuff, so it's going to feel like work. So the question becomes, when do we do anything? And I can guarantee you, I won't buy a sports car until Serena says to me one day, let's go shopping for a sports car. And then I'll go, Okay. Nice. You know, um, because that, that's the way my brain works, you know? You know, uh, you uh, said a lot of times you do you. Um, you are the, uh, how do they say, the genuine article, right? You I just, don't know about that, but you're just, okay. Yeah, I, I say so. Yeah, um, and I dig it. I dig it a lot. You know, I was hoping, you know, when, when we when we podcasted last year, I got you, I I got you on, and you were generous with your time, and I split up the episode, as you as you suggested. I, I ended up splitting it not into two parts, but into three because I don't know, it just made more sense at the time. Um, I thought, okay, the next time I get Vinny on, I swear I want to talk to him about things specific to no sugars, no grains, and weight loss, and I want to throw in some some training chat. And um, I'd love to get his take on, you know, the creative process and some of the mechanics around what it's like to or how do you become an author, you know, write your own book and stuff. Because I have sort of like these fantasies myself of maybe doing doing um, children's books, you know, because I have to read a lot of books for my kids. So I'm like, I could do right. this. Um, so, yeah, you know, I thought, I'd, you know, that, those would be things that I'd be able to. To pick, to pick your brain on, but I guess it's going to have to wait for another time because I'm having, again, again, I've been having so much fun just getting you on, hearing you, and, you know, just go back and forth a little bit. I know I don't, I'm not a big talker. I just can't help it when I get you on. You know? Well, Ruel, let's do this. Uh, you got to go right now, right? Or do you have to? I'll, I'll have to boogie in, uh, yeah, right now. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have to go. All right, well, here's the thing. Let's do this again next week. And it's just, I won't remember this. You got to remind me. Don't go, hey, we're going to do that subject you mentioned. Let's do books because there's a girl right now that's sitting on a story. This girl I know in Malibu. And she's like everyone else. She goes, I want to write a book. I want to write a book. And I'm trying to coach her through writing a book. Right? And, okay. I'm, and I'm an idiot. I don't know how to write a book. I've written two books. I wrote Monty and I wrote uh, Fitness Confidential. And they both became successful, one way more than the other one. And I will teach you how to do that. No problem. Cool. How does that sound? That sounds awesome. Okay. Yeah. We'll make that happen. Yeah. Let's do it, man. I'll come on in a week. Just call me you know, next week. Set something up with me. And I will take your audience through how I do it. And if an idiot like me can write a book 
and make it a big deal, anyone can. Because I've never had a writing class in my life. All right. Right? Cool. Yeah. All I've done was read a lot of books because my mom was a librarian, so I read everything. Damn. You know? Okay. All right. Cool. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, we'll, we'll set that up. We'll make it happen. Cool. I'll come hey, on Vin. every week, man. It'll be like another Vinny podcast. We'll just, you know, this is you the could first. Be my Anna. <laughs> oh. Okay, Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was weird. Uh, yeah. Um, cool, man. Thank you very, very much. Um, I will take you up on that offer, and uh, I'm just going to have to go and make shit happen. <laughs> yeah. I-, I will teach you how to write a children's book. All right. All right, Vinny. You got it, man. All right. Um, it's going to get weirder. Um, I love you, Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too, brother. I'll catch you later. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Ruel's Running Podcast with Ruel. If you like what you just heard, share it with your friends and your enemies. Also, be sure to check out the site over at ruelsrunning.com. This has been another Coffee with Heavy Cream production. Join us next time for another silly show of Ruel's Running Podcast.